Hello world, uh, it's Saturday morning here in Chicagoland. I hope you and your loved ones are safe and healthy today. Uh, I would like to welcome you to Why Northwestern uh, International Perspectives. Uh, my name is Aaron Stofchuk. Uh, I'm a Senior Associate Director of Admission and I've been a long time Director of International Recruitment here at Northwestern. Uh, I've been here for uh, now over 16 years uh, so Northwestern is uh, certainly a big part of uh, my life and my, uh, my experience. Uh, I'm excited to uh, talk to all of you uh, all over the world today. Um, we know that you're tuning in uh, from many countries. Uh, at last count, over 70 countries uh, registered uh, for this session. So we're excited to have a broad reach today and, and really explore a little bit about Northwestern uh, from primarily a student perspective. Um, I'm fortunate in my job to be able to travel around the world uh, and talk about Northwestern, uh, but it's rare that I get to actually have some help um, and uh, to have students talk about their experience uh, with me. Um, so um, I'm very excited uh, today to have that opportunity to sort of share this presentation uh, with students who are a part of the Northwestern community, with students who I uh, had the fortune of reviewing their applications at one time. Uh, and learning about them in detail, uh, and now have the chance uh, to be, uh, again, members of the same community uh, today. So um, I'm gonna give them a chance uh, to introduce themselves, and then I'll uh, continue to introduce the program today. Um, I'm gonna start uh, with uh, throwing it over to uh, Karina, uh, who's one of our Global Wildcat coordinators, um, and she can begin the introductions. Hi, I'm Karina. I'm uh, a Global Wildcat Coordinator at Northwestern. I'm in my second year and I'm studying theater and history. And I'm originally from London, but I grew up moving around a lot. So I know that international school kid life. Hey, um, my name's Martin. I was born in Poland, but I lived in Germany for most of my life. I'm also second year right now in Weinberg School of Arts and Sciences. Um, and I'm studying Global Health and Middle Eastern Studies. And I'm very excited to see you all guys. Um, hi, I'm Chloe. I'm a first year. I am in CESB, which is the School of Education and Social Policy. Um, I'm also kind of interested in psychology. I was born in Hong Kong. Um, I grew up in Shanghai, but I'm currently um, in Taiwan. In the spirit of this meeting, I would I would like to start with saying Dobro jutro i dobrodošli, which in my language means good morning and welcome to all of the international students uh, that hopefully are, are joining us. And uh, I'm Josip Bozovic, uh, coming from Montenegro, uh, and I'm studying biomedical engineering as part of the McCormick School of Engineering. Wonderful. Thank you for those great introductions, everyone. Um, and we're going to learn a lot more about those students uh, very shortly. Uh, we want you to kind of get excited uh, to talk to them and ask them your questions about life at Northwestern. Um, but our plan today is to begin uh, with a little bit of an introduction about the university uh, that I'll give. Um, and I'll spend most of that time talking about uh, kind of just the general uh, place of Northwestern, as well as the academic experience, and a little bit about admission and financial aid. Uh, and then, again, we'll open up the remainder of the time, uh, which should be at least 45 minutes uh, or so, or 40 to 45 minutes for the question. So, we want you as students around the world to drive this conversation, uh, to be the ones really um, helping us explore Northwestern. Uh, we wanna know your questions. We wanna know what you want to know. Uh, and you've got such a great range of students here from, from different places, with different experiences, um, different academic and, and extracurricular interests. Uh, so you're gonna have a chance to really get to know a lot more about Northwestern. Um, so that's gonna be the plan for today. And then um, I'll kind of uh, uh, try to guide some of those questions as well as kind of wrap things up at the end um, of the hour. So just to get started, um, again, as I imagine many of you have begun your uh, university search and you may be thinking about Northwestern, you may have already got some information about Northwestern, um, but I think hopefully one of the first things you've begun with is, you know, what is it, where is Northwestern and, and kind of what is that location experience like? And I, and I think that's where a lot of students around the world uh, begin their questioning uh, as they're looking at the US. Um, certainly, uh, many people are familiar with the East Coast and the West Coast, 
Um, but as you get into learning about Northwestern, you're, you start to learn about that third coast of the United States, um, which we, as we call it, which is the coast of Lake Michigan, one of the Great Lakes in the US, uh, which is where Northwestern is located. Uh, we are in uh, the city of Evanston, uh, in the state of Illinois, just north of the great city of Chicago, the third largest city in the United States. Um, and we are on a lakefront campus. Uh, I wish I could show it to you right now, um, but I'm, I'm call, call, calling or talking to you right now from my, my house, which is about a, um, about a couple kilometers south of the campus. Um, I can walk there, I could get there uh, by bike or, or by public transportation. Uh, but overall, um, you know, when you're talking about the campus, I think you know, there's some important things uh, that you should know. Um, that it starts with this idea that your, your community experience is going to be a residential one. Uh, in fact, you're going to be living on campus uh, with all the other students, um, and it's going to be a place um, that uh, is, is very uh, exciting to describe because I think unlike a lot of other American campuses, it's one that has um, no central quad, no central space. Um, it's kind of a wandering campus, one that um, from one end to the other is only about uh, a 20 minute walk. Um, it's bordered on one side entirely by water, that's the lake, and on the other side by the city of Evanston. So you can walk across the street and take advantage of this great location, uh, go to a coffee shop or a store or a restaurant, um, bookstore, um, kind of everything that you would want kind of in the immediate space is right there for you. But most of the time you don't even need to leave campus uh, as you're gonna find um, everything uh, that you need for your life uh, and, and your academics uh, right there. Uh, all of the programs are all intermingled throughout the campus. Um, it's a great mixture of kind of modern and traditional architecture. Uh, there's wonderful spaces to relax and hang out, whether it's sitting on the lake or uh, the Shakespeare Garden, which is a, a, a garden tucked behind uh, the engineering school, which has plants from the different Shakespeare plays, um, or walking along the kind of main street Sheridan Road, which kind of passes across many of the academic and support buildings. Uh, in general, I think students find um, the campus uh, one of their f favorite places in the area. It's this place that, that really offers them everything they need and inspires them in their academics. Um, there are many traditions associated with the campus. And I think one I always like to share is uh, painting the rock. In fact, there's this big ugly rock in one section of the campus, uh, which is a, a, a kind of a, exactly what it sounds, an ugly rock that gets painted um, almost every day during the school year. Um, it's a chance for students to express themselves, uh, to express joy, to express grief. Um, it's a, a, a tradition where you have to spend the night in front of it and then in the morning, again, you or your group gets to, um, to paint it. Um, and so it's represented many international students and causes over the years, uh, and many personal causes as well. So I, I love to see what's happening at The Rock and you can check that out as well. Um, Outside of the campus and outside of that city of Evanston, um, again, the city of Chicago is a big draw for international students. It's where you, of course, land when you arrive often at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. And it's a city that will really enhance both your social and academic experience. I love Chicago. Um, I didn't grow up here, uh, but again, I moved here um, almost 20 years ago and uh, wouldn't want to leave. Uh, it's really one of my favorite places in the world. Um, it's a city uh, that offers you kind of all the things you'd want. Um, in a large city, so those sort of classic entertainment options, whether it's great music or theater, um, sort of tourist attractions uh, like the Buckingham Fountain or the, the Bean, a sculpture that we, we uh, are affectionately uh, named uh, that's in our Millennium Park. It's also got great uh, events, uh, chances to see world-class sporting opportunities, whether it's uh, the Chicago Bulls um, or watching uh, professional soccer uh, we've had Champions League soccer uh, come through uh, every summer. Um, so really amazing opportunities there. Uh, major speeches and events, whether it's uh, presidential election opportunities to hear speakers or uh, other major events. So things are always happening in Chicago. Uh, from a food scene, uh, you couldn't find a better place. Uh, when you talk about the diversity of neighborhoods and people, Chicago is just an amazing place to explore for food. Um, and uh, you'll find, uh, again, places that uh, you just didn't know existed as you begin to explore the city. Uh, it's also very easily accessible. Again, you can be in Chicago in about in five to 10 minutes from the campus using public transportation or even free transportation provided by the university. Um, 
on uh, a shuttle bus. And um, it's, it's just a place that, again, will become part of your Northwestern experience. So I think when you think about Northwestern as a whole, and, and I hope you ask the students about their experience with it, you, you think about this, I, I would argue, perfect uh, location between the mix of lakefront campus, the city of Evanston, and then Chicago. Uh, again, what, what more could you want? Um, now, in terms of uh, academics, that's, again, another piece that I hope uh, you're, you're thinking very carefully about as you explore um, university search. And what makes Northwestern special academically is a combination, I think, of structure and calendar. Um, so there's no other university in the US with a particular set of six undergraduate schools that we have. Uh, you'll find a College of Arts and Sciences with um, all of the classic majors in natural sciences, social sciences, humanities, as well as many other unique majors that students get interested in from uh, things like the mathematical methods of the social sciences to environmental sciences and policy uh, to programs in African studies and Jewish studies. Uh, it's really just uh, the hub of the university when it comes to about half of the student body being part of that, as well as, um, again, so many different programs. Next, you're going to find the School of Engineering. Uh, and our School of Engineering is special because of uh, a few things. One is the approach to engineering. We call it whole brain engineering. Um, and this is the idea that we don't want engineers who are simply uh, math and science focused. We want them to have sort of the operation of that other side of the brain where they're interested in design, creativity, art. Um, and that's what is, is, is what the engineer expresses along with that great technical ability. Um, in addition, what's exciting is our engineering program has about 13 different majors. Uh, so that means, again, wide variety of programs that you can choose from. Uh, and it also includes a sequence in the first year where you're going to get to work on real world projects with real clients. Third, we have the School of Communication, which is where you'll find um, a lot of those extroverted uh, people. You'll hear from some today. Uh, in fact, people who are involved in theater, uh, performance studies, radio, television, film, communication studies, uh, and even the science of communication. This is an amazing place that brings together, I think, a very dynamic discipline of communication from all angles. Uh, and a chance to really, again, uh, tell stories uh, throughout the world. You'll also find, uh, sort of with our School of Communication, a separate, uh, entirely separate School of Journalism. Which, uh, this School of Journalism, uh, again, offers students a chance to share their voice, uh, to do that through any media uh, type. So whether you're interested in uh, being online, social media, sort of more traditional forms, whether that's print or television, um, these are things that you can pursue. Um, the School of Journalism um, is a place that is also, uh, again, supporting you as a full journalist. So you get to kind of learn all the skills related to uh, kind of a modern day journalist, uh, in including all of the technology. You learn how to be an ethical journalist. And you also get real experience. You're guaranteed to have a practical uh, internship in the School of Journalism as part of your academic study in a media company. Next, you'll find the School of Education and Social Policy. Again, chance to hear about that today. Um, it's a, a place that uh, is full of what we like to call change agents, uh, people interested in helping and changing people, uh, maybe one person at a time as a counselor or uh, uh, you know, a classroom at a time as a teacher or, or a community at a time in some cases uh, as someone who's interested in social policy. Um, there are also other majors involved there where you're looking at how organizations are led or changed. Um, and it's a place that again is uh, very exciting, very dynamic. It's also the school that grows the most during uh, the sort of time of students on campus. In other words, it's a small class to start in the first year, but by the end, um, it, it almost triples in size because so many people find the majors in that school so interesting. So um, you might not know or be uh, as sure about it yet, but again, know that you'll have the chance to explore it as you go. And then finally, our uh, School of Music is a conservatory level approach to music, and it's a place that will give you the chance to um, practice music, become a professional musician, or to explore music in many different ways. Um, and then what's exciting about this is that Northwestern, you choose one of these six schools as your kind of home and in your application. But what you should know is that you can change your mind at any point. You can move between the schools, actually quickly, you know, decide that I don't want to be in arts and science, but I want to be an engineer. I don't want to be an engineer, I want to be a communication uh, student. And you can ask our students about how that's worked for them. It's that simple. There's no other application. It's really just a process of kind of talking to your advisor, figuring out what you want to do. You're also gonna have the chance to combine things over 
these different schools. So again, one of the benefits of Northwestern is you don't have to give up on those other interests. You're gonna have a chance to just explore all six schools, take classes in all six schools, and in fact, create programs across schools. And I think that's what we want you to think about at Northwestern. We want you to think about the important pressing issues that you want to solve or be part of. So whether that's the COVID-19 crisis, uh, that's um, the refugee crisis, that's the environment, um, it's gender rights, whatever is important to you, think about how all of these different programs will combine uh, to help you impact that problem. Because the world doesn't operate on departments or majors, um, but operates kind of on, on big ideas. And I think that's what Northwestern specializes in. And what helps you do that is our calendar, the quarter system, uh, where you're gonna have the chance to uh, take 48 classes over four years, which is anywhere from eight to 16 more than a semester system. The chance to kind of change your mind uh, as you go through these different courses, to build on a, a foundation and to use quarters for other experiences. Um, and I think that's the final part of the academic experience that I want to share is again, that calendar really opens up what we call practical experiences at Northwestern, whether that's research, internships, other international experiences, um, or in particular entrepreneurial or innovation experiences. So these are things that any student in any major, any program can pursue. Um, and I think that's important to understand. So it doesn't matter if you're studying English or you're studying uh, mechanical engineering or you're studying the violin, any of these areas are open to you. So you can get an internship in the city of Chicago, which has um, top companies, organizations in any field you're interested in. And you can still stay at your dorm, hang out with your friends and have that work experience. You can pursue undergraduate research and get funded for it through our Office of Undergraduate Research. So you have a big idea or a deep idea and you wanna study it in particular, you can get that help. Um, you wanna again, start a company, create a new application. Um, that's something else that uh, you're gonna be able to do through um, our entrepreneurship center, the garage, um, or some of the other uh, entrepreneurship facilities and programs that we have on campus. And then finally, continuing your international journey. Um, it's gonna be hard to leave Evanston in Chicago, but uh, again, we support you still to do that. If you wanna go on to uh, another country and have another academic or practical experience or do research somewhere else, again, Northwestern is gonna support you to do that. As a global university, we have global reach. Um, and we have a lot of initiatives around the world and we're gonna support that and be excited for you to continue that international journey. Um, so those are again, the key elements I think of an academic experience in Northwestern that I wanted to relay. Again, I'm gonna save a lot of the fun stuff, uh, the fun uh, extracurricular and student life for our students and for your questions. Um, and I'm just gonna end my sort of uh, little introduction here with a little bit about the Admission and Financial Aid Office, um, just so that uh, again, you, uh, as an international student, understand how, um, how it works for you and again, how important it is to Northwestern. Uh, as again, I've mentioned um, the fact that I've been here for 16 years and been part of um, changing the international community at Northwestern to grow it and diversify it. So at this point, we have um, over 95, so approaching 100 different countries represented in our undergraduate student population. Um, we're very excited about that. And I think that really tells you a story um, that what we're able to do is reach such a broad audience um, because of the appeal of, I hope, the academics and, and life at Northwestern, but also because of our commitment, uh, I think, to access and to financial aid. Um, we wanna make sure that any student around the world has a chance to apply to Northwestern and be here. Um, and I've been very much part of that. Um, I also have uh, a few other colleagues um, that is a clo close knit admission group that focus specifically on international recruitment. So as an international student, um, you're gonna have several resources to talk to us directly, whether it's myself personally or my colleague Christy or my colleague Maddie, um, they're gonna be there for you um, to talk to you about how, what it's like to apply from your country to connect you with a current student, uh, to answer your specific questions about the curriculum in your country, um, you know, whether you're taking a national curriculum or you're taking a more international curriculum, something like an advanced placement, an international baccalaureate, a British A-level, French baccalaureate. Um, you're gonna have, we know that people come from all different backgrounds and we want you to understand that we review your application in the context of your experience. So your high school is your high school, um, your community is your community and we will look at you in those opportunities. You don't need to do anything else than achieve and do well in your space. 
Um, we will meet you where you are. We will understand what it means to be a good student in your curriculum. And then uh, from there, we'll evaluate you like any other student who applies Northwestern using um, the tools uh, available to us in our application process. Um, we allow you to apply using the common application or the coalition application. Um, we expect you to fill out uh, some information about what you do uh, when you're not in school. Um, and that can vary uh, from something very organized to something very unorganized. Again, it varies across uh, the world. We're also going to ask you to tell us about yourself through essays and to have you have someone else tell us about you through recommendation letters. Um, and then the final piece is we do currently require a, a standardized test, uh, an SAT or ACT uh, from students, uh, no matter where you are in the, in the world, the US or abroad. Um, and so that is still a requirement. Um, we know it's difficult right now and a little bit challenging um, to, to take these tests. So we're going to uh, make sure that we understand that and work with you. And again, understand your score in the context of your experience. Um, for those of you who do not speak English as a first language, or for which English is not your uh, mode of instruction, a language of instruction at your high school, um, we would also ask that you take an English proficiency exam, uh, the, the, uh, whether it is the uh, TOEFL or the IELTS. Um, we are now going to be accepting uh, additional tests, which we'll uh, be uh, explaining on our website uh, coming up in the month of June. Uh, but uh, more details will be there to follow, but we'll give you some more choices and options should you need uh, to take an English proficiency exam. Um, those are, again, the basic things you need for applying for admission. As for financial aid, again, North, as I mentioned, it's one of the most important things we do here at Northwestern for all of our students, whether they're US or international. Uh, we have a need-based financial aid program, uh, which means that we can help the student, no matter what their financial background, afford this uh, university experience. Um, what we do is we ask you to, um, if you need help, apply for financial aid. Um, when you do that, uh, you'll check yes on your admission application. You will submit additional materials in, um, to Northwestern in the form of what's called the CSS profile and some other financial documentation. Um, we will review your application um, for admission. We will um, take the fact that you ask for financial aid also into consideration. Uh, which is called Need Aware Review. And um, if we decide to admit you, um, we will meet your need 100%, meaning we will make sure that you can afford this, that your family contribution is possible, and that your, the way that we will help you is through all grants or what we call grants or scholarships, meaning you will not have any loan debt, you will not have any work as part of your financial aid package. It will be all uh, given to you and supported by the university. We're also able to support you in many other ways financially, and I think that's just such a critical piece to what um, our Northwestern experience is. Um, all right, so I've probably gone longer than I even meant to, um, and I'll now get to the questions and, and, and answers uh, from our students. Um, so I'm very excited, to, again, to begin these, and I'll uh, call out uh, some of these first ones, um, and we'll get started. So first one we have here um, is about um, resources for international students and kind of transitioning to Northwestern. And again, I know this year may look a little differently, but traditionally, uh, how, how is that part? Um, so uh, let's uh, give a first start to uh, Karina. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that transition um, uh, to Northwestern. Yeah, absolutely. So one of my favorite parts about the international community at Northwestern is that we actually have an orientation prior to regular orientation, which we called Wildcat Welcome, um, specifically for international students. So your first point of contact as an international student when you come to Northwestern and potentially even your first time in the United States is a welcome that's entirely curated for the international experience. So you're going to be talking to older students who are internationals, you're going to be meeting fellow students who are internationals in the same boat as you. Um, there are lots of presentations, but also just a lot of like a lot of time to socialize and really get to know the community and a, a creation of a, like a really safe space where you can sort of air your concerns or your questions and to just sort of set yourself up for success um, in terms of transitioning to the US. We, can, we know it's like, it can be a really scary thing to do. So I think Northwestern does an incredible job of making that process as easy as possible. We also have a lot of other resources available. Our international office for more logistical questions is just so amazing. They are there for like 
any, any question or concern you might ever have. Martin and I are also global wildcat coordinators. So some of you may have seen us on some other panels or on the website. We literally, our job is to be here as um, a point of contact for international students, both prospective and admitted students, um, to sort of talk to them about student life at Northwestern and help them make that transition easier. If you have any questions about travel or what things you should be bringing, um, or just really any concerns at all about transitioning to Northwestern, um, we can help you out with that. We can contact, we can put you in contact with different cultural groups that you might be interested in. And really truly everybody that's already here is so, so eager to help our future international community feel as welcome and as comfortable as possible. Um, and it really wasn't something that I was expecting when I when I was admitted, but I was so, so pleasantly surprised by it. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers the question. Very good, thank you. Here's one for all four of you. Um, and we'll start uh, with Chloe this time and maybe Chloe, you pass it uh, along. Um, and so it's about um, traditions at Northwestern. If each of you maybe could mention uh, a tradition, a favorite tradition, um, something that you've experienced during your time so far at Northwestern? Uh, yeah, so it's my first year at Northwestern, so I probably have a different like answer than the rest of the other panelists. And I didn't really get um, a spring quarter in person. So there are some uh, traditions I wasn't really able to partake in in person. However, there's something called like the primal scream that happens um, right around like exam week. And it's kind of what it sounds like you just, at like 9 p.m. I think on like the Sunday before exam week start, I could definitely be wrong about the logistics. Um, people just kind of scream. Um, and I know it sounds kind of silly, doesn't take up that much time. It's about maybe like 10 seconds of your life. Um, it's it's just actually really nice stress relief. And it's just kind of like in solidarity, we understand that it is a stressful time, but we're gonna like get through it. Um, I had only one primal scream so far and I really enjoyed it. I would suggest that you guys take part in it. Um, uh, I think Martin, you're right below me. So, oh, I guess no one can see that, but Martin, go ahead. Um, so my favorite thing about Northwestern or the favorite tradition is Dillo Day, which is actually happening today um, in an online format, unfortunately, but it's uh, a student run festival. Um, I think it's even the biggest student run festival in the US. I'm not sure about that, but I've heard that from somewhere. Um, and my flatmate is super involved in the organization. I get like all the inside info and it's such a fun thing to do. It's just a day where like the entire Northwestern community just stops doing whatever they're doing and just enjoys a music festival on the lake full. And that's just absolutely amazing. Uh, a tradition I really like and remember is uh, at the end of Wildcat Welcome Week when we all get together in a stadium and we all learn the class dance as they call it. And that is always fun and it's unique for every generation, which means only your like people from your class will know it and maybe someday in the future, you know, we will dance again. I mean, for sure. And another one I, I just wanted to mention is uh, our anthem, All My Mother. It's really, I don't know, it's really something special and moves me every time I hear it, either on a football field or basketball field, or wherever it plays, it's something, you know, so unique uh hail to northwestern what like those words when you come here really start to mean something and really bound, bound to the the hearts i think of all students yeah i'll finish this off with a more of a niche tradition because i think it speaks to the fact that within the smaller communities at northwestern they are also just ripe with tradition so one of the things that we have in the theater community is the dolphin show which is the largest student produced musical in the country um, pretty much everything from start to finish is done by students and one event that we have every year as a fundraiser is what we call the rock show so at around midnight um, the team of the Dolphin Show will have sort of thrown together a musical. So I think um, last year it was Mamma Mia. Um, and they just come out in the craziest costumes and perform like outside in the cold in front of the rock. And everybody, everybody else from the theater community shows up um, and like huddles up together and has a blast. Um, and it's a really, really fun way to fundraise, but also just bring our community together. Awesome. Those are uh, perfect examples, I think, of the Northwestern uh, spirit. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, again, our mascot at Northwestern is uh, the Wildcat. It's, uh, uh, again, American universities, all these, uh, these different uh, animals often or other creatures that are kind of their sports uh, mascots in particular. But it, here it sort of, I think, uh, goes beyond uh, sports and athletics and into sort of imbibes into all of what we do 
get the wildcat claw and we do lots of other traditions surrounding it. Um, big part of it. Um, so um, speaking of uh, some of that, um, I guess, uh, well, let's, let's transition to a different way. And, and since you're on campus, Joseph, uh, maybe you could speak to this first or maybe only, but depending on that, um, just a little bit about, I think the um, residential experience, the housing, um, you know, kind of what that's been like as an international student. Um, you know, I think people are very curious about, you know, moving. I know in a lot of parts of the world, you're not on a campus. Maybe you're living in a flat, again, off campus or things. And sometimes here it's a mix. So if you could speak to that. Yes. So I, I am staying currently on campus during this crisis. And I would like to use the opportunity to just say huge, huge thanks to people, you know, who made it possible for and just says and goes back to the point of how Northwestern take care of their international students. I'm completely able to stay here and all the resources are available to me. When it comes to different types of residential, uh, let's say places, dorms, you can stay, it, there is a huge variety. So every dorm has its own special vibe, so to say. Uh, some, some are more activity and more fun related. Some are residential colleges. Uh, in which you have students mostly going to engineering classes. Uh, there, are, there are some in which you can take pass, par, uh, part in the hierarchy of the organization. And so you can change things you don't like, you can propose uh, what you should do as a community. So every dorm is a community for themselves. Uh, on the other note, there are different types of, of communities and, uh, and the dorms here. Uh, there are fraternity houses, and sorority houses in which uh, obviously students who partake in uh, Greek, Greek life live and uh, they have communities for themselves. Then if you, if you are really into trying to improve uh, our connection with the nature, there is a greenhouse in which you can show all the other students and all the world uh, how you can be more efficient and uh, how you can save the planet uh, by every step in the day, by one shower and uh, more, other things you can you can do and yeah uh, partake in that and uh, I think regular dorms as well every every dorm even though there are just residential halls as they call them uh, each and every one is different and it is very difficult to understand this through reading the numbers of how big it is and seeing the pictures because all the pictures of any dorm of every every college are dreamlike but once you get here you understand how it goes and you understand uh, that even though maybe at first you don't like it because you saw something, some comment on internet, that there is something special about each place that you will uh, fall in love with. And I think that's, that's something very great. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Excellent. Um, great description. And again, um, so, you know, again, I wish I could get back to campus and, and move into one of those places many times. Uh, so it's, it's such a special place. Um, and you're right, such variety. Um, and I think that's kind of rare. Again, I, you know, there's such a you know, different experience depending on where you are. And, and it's spread throughout the campus. It's not like everyone lives in one spot or that first year students only live with only first year students unless they want to. <laughs> so you really have that, that, that mix. Um, that's great. Um, next question I think is exciting um, to talk a little bit about um, you know, the, uh, the nature of the Northwestern community, um, uh, you know, in terms of its uh, description of quality, uh, I think one of the things that we often say, and I, I wanted to see how you feel about this, and Chloe, maybe you can take this one, is um, how the Northwestern community is described. Um, people want to know, is it collaborative, right? Is this the kind of place where you, you work together? Uh, or how does that feel? And, and what other adjectives might you use to describe the uh, Northwestern community? Uh, yeah, for sure. So I mentioned earlier that I'm in the School of Education and Social Policy, and actually something that uh, CESPI, it's the short form because the other one's just too long, uh, is that they really do focus on collaboration, teamwork, supporting each other. Um, a lot of classes are like project-based and you're put in teams um, and you meet people from like all disciplines, um, different majors, different grades, different interests, everything like that. So it's uh, like collaborative as uh, you know, people have mentioned. It's, I think it's also very like supportive in the sense that um, everyone can contribute something different and like people love the contribution you make regardless of whether or not it like uh, comes to fruition. I, I think I can only speak to SESPI and 
I don't know of like another school, maybe like School of Calm because you guys are like theater and you guys perform and play together. That might be like a different perspective. But um, as far as I know, I've found it very like nourishing. Uh, there's just an endless amount of support, especially from professors too. Um, they're very like sympathetic and they actually, they care about you, not as like a student, but like as a human being, like as a person. And I really appreciate that. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so now again, you spend a lot of your time um, as a student, of course, but uh, there seems to be a lot of interest in what you do when you're not studying. Um, and I think, so maybe we could start with Martin um, and if anyone else wants to chime in, but maybe talk a little bit about a, a couple of things, just again, clubs and organizations that you've been part of or that you are excited uh, to share. Um, and um, one of you could possibly explain what Greek life means. Uh, it does not mean necessarily our Greek students. Um, so that'd be helpful to, to get out there, just explain that. Um, uh, and, and also as it relates to things that people do, could, could one of you speak to um, playing sports when you're not uh, um, a recruited athlete? So let's start with Martin though. Yeah, um, I'm mostly part of cultural organizations on campus, uh, one being the, the International Student Organization, uh, which is basically what it sounds like. It's just a bunch of international students in a single group. Um, and we plan events together that can range from just like simple parties at someone's house to um, speaker events or events where you have like a, like a panel discussion with speakers that we invite both from Northwestern but also from other universities. Um, I remember last year we had several speakers from the University of Chicago coming in talking about, for example, the refugee crisis um, in Greece or queer communities in Chicago, um, just so we have like a better understanding of like global issues and global perspectives um, amongst the international student community. But it's also just a very social group where you can like meet a lot of other fellow international students and just like tag along with them. And that was my first kind of community that I had here on campus. Um, I also work for um, my department, which is the Slavic Studies Department, where I translate um, poems for a teacher from um, German into English. And that takes like a surprisingly big kind of part of my week every single week. But it's so interesting because it's just like one of those things that I would have never done anywhere and I probably wouldn't have gone into translating uh, in my entire life. But it's just an opportunity that kind of popped up and a teacher just approached me after a class and I was like, okay, yeah, why not? Um, and it's definitely something super, super cool. Um, so does anybody want to talk about Greek life? Because I'm really not part of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can talk about Greek life. I'm, I'm not a part of it either, but um, a lot of people I've met are in Greek life. So that's like, I guess I should preface with what Greek life is. Um, <laughs> it's not necessarily like people from Greece. It's, it's essentially, a, mm, it's like a group of people who, are in like the same like a society kind of like in, in high school maybe at an honor society usually there are like sororities and fraternities sororities are usually like female like all female and uh fraternity are all males so they usually focus on like service it's also like a social group so um maybe you've seen on instagram they're like kappa delta 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 theta alpha a lot of greek um letters <laughs> And it doesn't only limit to just like socialization and service work. So there are um, certain fraternities and like Greek life uh, groups on campus that are only service. So there's, I don't know their exact names, but those are co-ed. There's also business fraternities. So that's more like, they're called like DSP, AKSI. You, you can research a lot into this. They focus more on like the business aspect. There's also like, um, multi like national ones that are focusing on that too. So they have themes to it if you want to. So um, in terms of Greek life, the first point I wanted to make was uh, just cause you're in Greek life, it doesn't mean like all your friends are gonna be in Greek life. And just cause you're not in Greek life, it doesn't mean you're never gonna meet them. Um, their location on campus aren't like in their own secluded corner, they're part of the campus and you walk next to like a frat house or like a sorority house any day of the week. Um, along with that, you don't have to join if you don't want to, but if you want to, um, people are very open to talking about it and it's very likely that you'll meet somebody in Greek life. So if you want to, you can talk to them about it. Um, and there's just like a place you can, there are your sisters and your brothers. Um, and that's kind of my extent of Greek life knowledge. 
Um, I can also kind of talk about uh, playing sports outside of like being a not perfect, being a official Northwestern athlete. So there are club sports and intramural sports, and there are also gyms if you like like working out, like running or whatever. So club sports, they're like a bit higher commitment. They're probably like a varsity high school sports team. So you need to go to practice. Uh, you guys have games you guys play. You probably need to try out for it. Some clubs don't really depends on the sport. Um, and then there's like intramural, which is free for all, anyone, any level of experience can go. And usually uh, they have teams are formed. You can do it through people in your dorm, people in your different clubs and activities. Sometimes random group chats, like say like, hey, we need a girl, we need a guy to play this sport. And you can also sign up as a free agent. If you can't like assemble a team, then you just kind of put your name and email out there. And if a team needs somebody, then you'll get an email and you'll be able to play with them. So just because you're not like an official Northwestern athlete, it doesn't mean you will never exercise again in your life, unless you want to, but that's kind of a self-choice. Okay, let's, uh, Karina, or you were gonna talk a little quick about oh. arts, and then or Joseph, you were gonna talk about some more, why don't you follow up on sports first? Because you had some stuff on that, and then uh, we'll go to Karina, end it with uh, a little bit about the arts scene. Yeah, uh, so uh, aside of club, intramural, and gyms, as uh, Chloe mentioned, uh, I, I trained basketball throughout my life for something like 10 years, and I played it professionally, I would say amateur professionally slash in Europe. And, and so I, I, I was trying to, I was looking into something that is more organized in a way, uh, and that, that can maybe help our varsity teams, which are our professional teams at university. And so as it happens at Northwestern, I, I saw a flyer on my dorm uh, about these trials for, to be a practice player for a women's basketball team. And I was like, sure, why not? Let, let, let's check it out. Let's see how it works. And uh, what I saw is that you, you can join and become a practice player, practice with our varsity basketball women team or men team, uh, and thus help them and also find yourself on, uh, playing on a very high level, I would say, uh, compared to uh, other things you can find as well. If you are not, if you don't want to uh, an obligation or if you don't want a weekly commitment, you can always choose club. And in the end, if you just want to do it for fun with friends, buddies from uh, your a residential hall you can do as Chloe said uh, intermural. Uh, I would also like to mention another uh, student organization that is really really big on our campus that that is a so associated student government and also throughout my life I always try to be uh, in an organization that tries to uh, gather all the other smaller organizations and students together in order to improve something we see that needs improvement or uh, to work on some uh, new projects. And, and so I ran for the senator uh, at our ASG Senate. And I, I, I can tell you that it, it is really something I never experienced before. Let's say our budget, our uh, annual budget is $1.6 million, which means we allocate this money to all the small student organizations. And what amazed me really is how quickly and easily you can propose a legislation and how quickly and easily you can you can give funding to something you you think is going to be a huge success, and that's what happened. Let's say uh, last year when we when uh, people and students started uh, this uh, bike company, small bike company that you can use on campus without it's it's renting by company, but you don't need people working. It's it's just an app and bicycles around the campus you can use whenever you see them, whenever you need them. It's it's so simple, so easy, such a great idea. And it all got approved in, I would say, a month or even less with, with such a small touch of administration that they were not even involved in this. It was completely student run, which is something really amazing. And through the whole experience, I understood how the, the whole campus works and how all the student organizations, and I was just looking up and trying to find how many are there on campus, but I couldn't find the exact number. But I can tell you there are so many you couldn't believe because uh, during Waika Welcome Week, when there is uh, the huge panel, uh, it's it, it's a place un undescribable really how many student organizations are there. It, it's going to be hectic, but it's going to be so much fun because you will you will find everything you like and everything you always thought of doing. And that's what I think is great about this uh, this place. 
Yeah, uh, Karina. Yeah, I'll just speak really quickly to the art scene. I think we have such a vibrant art scene and it, it provides extracurricular activities for people like me who are sort of enmeshed and entrenched in that world. And like, that's what we're studying and doing and living and breathing, but it also provides um, a huge source of entertainment and activity for people outside of that community to come in and watch these performances on the weekends or in any given evening of a week, um, of weekday. And so we have like acapella groups, we have theater shows constantly going on. We have comedy troops, we have dance groups, we have literally, anything that you could possibly imagine um, and you can get involved in them or go watch their shows like I said it's I would highly recommend looking it up if you're interested it's like literally unfathomable how, how much arts we have. <laughs> yeah I think um, performance arts are one of the defining characteristics of Northwestern because of the excellence in the actual academic program it filters down uh, and a similar thing although we didn't talk about it and can't talk about everything is, is media I think you're going to find as a student you don't have to be studying journalism to be engaged in an incredible media environment, whether that's again, writing for the Daily Northwestern, being on film, on TV, on the radio for WNUR. Um, there's so many different opportunities uh, to get your voice heard. Uh, that's another sort of big bin that students kind of engage in, along with, I think, civic engagement and service. Again, it's a community that gives and you're gonna see uh, a lot of students find outlets in that way. Um, all right, next question. I think this is a great one. Uh, a little more back to the academics. I mean, I gave the overview, but from your personal experiences, um, I think twofold. Uh, one is what you know. What's your experience with the quarter system? And two, tell us a little bit about kind of that that experience in the classroom. You know, uh, I think there's always this concern that it's going to be straight lecture. So tell tell us a little bit more about that interaction, the type of classes, the size of class with professors. So uh, raise your hand who'd like to jump on one of those quarters. Or that. okay, let's start with uh, Joseph. You go for it. Uh, so, yes, I, I would just start by, by saying something in general about McCormick as School of Engineering. Uh, my dream throughout, throughout my life was to be at the place uh, where cutting edge science happens, where innovation happens. And something that is really great about this university is that this is exactly the place where you will be taught by the people that innovate things that are cutting edge. And as a scientific mind, you cannot ask anything more than that. And uh, uh, then to add how, how the whole structure of the classes looks like. Uh, there are different classes and courses. Some are more general in a sense, some general scientific, let's say, in uh, uh, needs and uh, courses in which you will have something around 200, maybe 300 students. Those are such as uh, chemistry, general chemistry, general physics, general math. Uh, but then as you progress uh, in second year, and especially I've been told in third and fourth year, uh, you uh, happen to find yourself in a smaller classes, in classes where uh, you will do a project with uh, two or three uh, teammates uh, and where you will develop something for an actual client. And just, just to add upon this, in our engineering school, uh, it, this doesn't only happen in third or fourth year. It happened in the first quarter as part of the uh, class that uh, uh, Aaron mentioned, uh, DTC, Design uh, Thinking and uh, Creativity, uh, in which I couldn't believe just how, you know, how this works and uh, how uh, this whole brain uh, idea is really brought to you immediately. And you immediately see that uh, you will have the opportunity to show your math and physics skills, but also uh, to implement your creativity and design and communication, because you will be directly speaking and working with, with one of the best rehabilitation uh, hospitals in the world, essentially. And all of this, I, I just couldn't believe, you know, it was the first quarter and we were already dealing with, uh, uh, with real people, with real problems and immediately trying to solve them. Of course, this process, uh, takes time and uh, it goes step by step. They don't immediately give you to uh, do a surgery or something like that. But uh, you start from, let's say, a kitchen appliance in first quarter, but then in uh, in spring, in third quarter, you, you are able to actually produce a medical device that will be used by uh, some person. And this medical device is, is, not, is not something that you just replicate that already exists. Exist. It, your goal is to try to improve what's already on the market. 
And obviously for uh, non-engineering people, maybe that doesn't sound fun or interesting, but I'm, I'm telling you for people who care about this and who are interested in this, this is the biggest thing that can happen to you in first year of, of college. Yeah, so that's about that. Thank you. Yeah, Martin, how about you? You're, different, you know, you're in a very different major, so let's talk a little bit about that, yeah. Yeah, I have absolutely nothing to do with numbers or science or whatnot. Um, my biggest focus lies on like humanities, um, literature classes and language classes. And given that my departments are really, really small departments, like there's a maximum of like 30 people, 40 people in each of my majors, um, all our classes are actually really tiny, which I absolutely love. For example, my Arabic class um, varies from like eight to 12 people every quarter, which is like the perfect class size to really study a language with someone who like is a native speaker and who can teach you every single intricacy. Um, and you can take the time with the teacher every single lesson because there's only eight of you. So obviously he's not going to be overwhelmed uh, with a big, enum, big, that big amount of students in the class. Uh, similarly for all my other classes, I don't think I've ever been in a class that has more than 15, 18 people that I really cared about. Um, so that's definitely a really cool aspect about Northwestern. Um, obviously you can end up in like a lecture class, but even then I've noticed that to, um, teachers try to like implement little group activities, little group works, um, have it like in a sort of half half way where they lecture for half the class and the other half is uh, meant for you to work on a project with your group together. So that's a great thing that you can do in the uh, quarter system. And speaking of the quarter system, I'm also a person who loses interest in a very specific topic very quickly. So the fact that classes are only 10 weeks long is absolutely amazing because you do this one thing very intensely for 10 weeks and then you can move on to the next thing. Or if you're really interested in a certain topic, you can take classes that follow up to the classes that you've taken already um, and you can just prolong that. So you can kind of like engineer your own little uh, schedule and you can kind of select the topics that you want to do like for a shorter while or you can select some topics that you can do for like a longer time up to a year. For example, my Arabic class, I've taken them for two years now. Um, they've never gotten boring. I've taken a class on like German science literature. That was pretty disappointing to me. So um, it was done after 10 weeks. Um, I learned a bunch, but that wasn't my thing. And I could move on fairly quickly without feeling like I lost the whole quarter to something. So yeah. Chloe, how about you? Uh, what's your experience in uh, CESPI? <laughs> Quarters or uh, faculty? Uh, yeah, so I've had classes where um, the entire 10 weeks is dedicated to like a group project you're working on. Um, so that's kind of really fun. They're not just, uh, we had assignments actually that wasn't just like turn in this essay, turn this PowerPoint. We had a, uh, an assignment that was like hang out with your group, like get to know them like on like a, a deeper level. So um, there's a lot of emphasis on like outside of just like books and like the classroom. Um, I do want to mention that my SESB is the smaller school uh, when you begin with. And that also means that the classes you take are probably going to be smaller people, less people. Um, I would say about 20, max 25 people in the classes I've taken. Um, I've also taken like a larger lecture hall class, something like intro to psychology. I think that's just kind of a class, whatever college you go to, there's going to be over like two, 300 people. Um, so there were about 300 people. But what's also so great is that although there are 300 students, there are like TAs and um, uh, sorry, there's teaching assistants and like the professor, they have office hours and you can go and it's not gonna be all 300 people going in at the same time. It's gonna be like five, 10 people. So although you are in like a big, big group of people, uh, you'll still be able to have a little bit of like intimacy with uh, questions or anything that you have like maybe struggling a bit on. Um, yeah, so SESB is tends to be like a little bit smaller, just like the specific majors Martin discussed just then. Karina, and your, your thoughts? Yeah, I was just going to touch a little bit on the faculty component of it because the School of Calm just has some of the most incredible faculty I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Um, and, and I think it's true for all Northwestern faculties that they care so, so much about you as a student and not just you as a student in their immediate class, but you as a person going out into the world, pursuing your dreams, pursuing your ambitions. And they really are like so, so dedicated to helping you in whatever way they can. Um, and I think like the network that we are able to build with people like like one of our acting professors started a theater company with David Schwimmer, who you might have seen on Friends. And like um, one of my acting professors 
has given us these like incredible plays to read. And then we'll say, oh, actually, yeah, I'm best friends with the author. Maybe he can come into our class when you guys are doing those scenes. Um, and it's just like, it's just, they're so, they're so dedicated to making sure that you get the absolute most out of the Northwestern experience that you possibly can. And one of the biggest, I think one of the biggest assets that Northwestern has to offer is that network and is that connection. It's just absolutely wild the the amount of people that you're able to reach just because of who you come into contact with on campus. So um, I think that part of it is just amazing. And also the fact that they're incredible human beings and are there to support you and your personal development as well. Um, my acting teacher always says that his first priority is not to make us better actors, but to make us better people, so. Awesome, fascinating. I, I think that really tells you a lot about the, I think the Northwestern academic experience again, because you have students here in four different, uh, four of the six different schools. And again, such a crossover in terms of the same type of experiences that they've had, right? But also unique at the same time. So I think that's a great point. All right, I know we're never gonna get to all your questions, but we're gonna give one final question out here for all four of you to answer 30 seconds. Um, and then uh, I'll kind of put together some closing remarks as we kind of near the end of the hour here. Again, we could probably do a whole nother hour and, um, and keep talking again, uh, but, uh, but we don't have that. So uh, we're gonna end it um, with uh, sort of this, the classic question uh, that we relate to the application in some cases. And, and you can answer this from kind of a, a current perspective, a past perspective, a future perspective, however you'd like. Uh, but again, the idea of why Northwestern? Um, why and you? What's the, what should students be considering and, and why, you know, is this the choice for them, uh, whether it's their first choice or, you know, a choice? Uh, but that's, I think that's the way to think about um, this final question as, uh, as people go off from our conversation today. So if each of you could um, share your sort of why Northwestern at the moment. Um, I know you all wrote uh, very good ones on the application originally, but um, again, that can change and develop just as you all have. So uh, let's go with Martin first, put him on the spot. Yeah, um, I had three reasons to come here or three reasons why I applied, which was I really like public transport. Um, and that was one thing that I really wanted um, and we have that here with the L, we have buses, we have the Metro, we have like the Metra, which goes further distances. So that's pretty cool. Um, then I also was really looking for a big city around me, um, which again, takes the box of Chicago, which is an absolutely amazing place. And I found it really important to be like financially supported um, coming from a low income family. Um, and that's more than fulfilled uh, with the financial aid that we're getting and with the financial resources that we can apply for, like financial um, uh, undergraduate research grants and internship grants. So that's definitely something that has been ticked. All right, let's jump over to Chloe. Uh, yeah, so when I was applying for college, I literally had no idea what I wanted to do. I had interests, but they weren't really a major. So the one really big thing about Northwestern is like the quarter system and the flexibility um, I think I literally wrote this in my essay that he, like Aaron probably read. It was like the flexible mobile walls of Northwestern uh, because being able to take a class um, in another school is super easy. Um, and because of how the quarter system works, because you do take more courses than a semester school normally would, or just like in general, uh, you can explore. And just like Martin said, like, if you don't really like it, you know, at least, you know, and you get to explore and you're not going in completely like deadlocked on your major. Um, and that was just like a personal preference. And also like purple is my favorite color. So that was like a huge plus for the merch I get. Um, Karina, do you wanna go? Yeah, very similarly. I was really, really drawn to the flexibility. I have like two very different sort of passions, one which is more academic and one which is a lot more performance-based. And Northwestern was kind of the only school that I identified that was able to give me the highest possible caliber of both of those things without me having to sacrifice um, or cut corners on, on any of my interests um, too early on in my life. So that was definitely a huge draw for me. And another thing is just the Northwestern community um, and the campus and the lifestyle of it all. Like when I got to campus and visited just the, the lake being there and the, the green and like everybody was just so, so incredibly passionate about what they were doing. And it was clear that the entire environment was sort of building to that atmosphere. And it was just really something I wanted to be a part of. So it's up to me, I guess, to see to end why Northwestern. And I would say that uh, as an international student, I was completely clueless about the whole system. And so all the universities were just numbers mostly. 
for me. And uh, I, I wasn't really able to answer that question then completely. I, I think my answer was more general and broad, uh, just, from, just from my understanding I got from the flyers and uh, the things you could read on websites. But when I came here, I, I really think I accomplished my dream of being at a place where you are taught and where you have the opportunity to innovate and to be creative and to co constantly grow from every minute, every, every day and every year. And I think that's, that's really why, why Northwestern for me. And just to add to that, I, I, was, I'm, I was born and raised uh, in a place uh, on a coast and we have a coast here also, which is like, it's not as warm, but it's a coast. And I, I like the, the peacefulness of the waves. And that's it, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, a great answer. Um, a great answer is all around, I think, um, and genuine. Um, and that's been most one of the most important things. Um, so hopefully, again, uh, you've all uh, learned a little bit today about Northwestern and experience of Northwestern. Uh, again, although we may not have the chance to get to you in person, uh, we will try to get to you uh, in many other ways uh, this uh, month, coming month, and um, future months uh, online. Uh, digitally, virtually. Um, in addition to this session, we encourage you to, to take a look at our admission website uh, for a whole series of sessions that will be coming up in June, uh, whether it's tours uh, that are going to be specialized, like uh, with STEM focus or arts focus. There'll be uh, other student panels, other information sessions. Uh, again, we've had some other great programs prior to this, which you can still watch if you have access to YouTube and our uh, channel. If you uh, go to that, um, there's going to be programs on the music scene, uh, kind of the uh, life at Northwestern there. There's going to be programs about eating out in Evanston, so chance to learn about the food scene. Um, so we're doing a lot of things, again, to help you really get a feel for what this place is like. And I think you should uh, be you know, excited to check out some of those. Uh, in addition, um, the posting um, on Monday will be a series of events for uh, the international community. Um, that we will be sharing uh, with partner or um, universities. So a few of um, probably the other universities you're looking at around the United States. Um, and so there'll be a series of uh, programs throughout June that you can tune into as well, sign up for. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, I'd also just like to um, sort of say uh, that uh, in general, we're with you in this sort of challenging time. Um, the pandemic has, has hit everyone hard and everyone around the world. And so uh, we're with you and we're thinking about everyone and um, uh, we know that it's difficult. We know that it's confusing, uh, especially as you think about applying to universities. Um, Northwestern has a great um, leadership team that has set out a website uh, with information about our approach to the crisis. Uh, so you can certainly look there. Um, and I believe it's been dropped in the chat. Um, take a look at what we're doing and how we're approaching the fall quarter. Um, and and uh, then also, Thinking ahead, we'll, we'll continue to update that with um, the decisions as they're made. For those of you, again, applying, um, know that, again, this is the important time for you, but because we take a holistic approach to application review, um, you should understand that the, that process is tailor-built for a moment like this, where we are able to understand what you're doing in the, in the setting that you're at, at the time you're at. So when things change, we can adapt our process and we can learn and know about you know, what that experience has been for you, uh, make adjustments as necessary. And so we will do that uh, so that again, you're not uh, negatively affected by the crisis and that you can still apply and still achieve your dreams. Um, so that's our approach um, and, and please know that. Um, so with that, um, again, from all of us here at Northwestern, um, all the students, uh, we hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of the weekend. Um, and a, and a wonderful college search ahead. Uh, we're here for you should you have um, questions about Northwestern. Uh, thank you everyone and goodbye. Go Cats. <laughs>